Uh, the member for Mount Lawley. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs. Minister, I refer to today's landmark decision by the National Native Title Tribunal to register all six of the South West Native Title Settlement Agreements. And I ask, can the Minister advise the House of the process now going forward in implementing all six agreements? And can the Minister outline to the House how the settlement will benefit the Noongar community who have worked incredibly hard to see it progress? Speaker. Minister. Mr Speaker, uh, I thank the member for Mount Lawley for the question. His background in native title, he's no doubt very aware of the significance of today's announcement by the National Native Title Tribunal to register all six of the South West Native Title Settlement Indigenous Land Use Agreements. And this is, uh, I guess it's to a certain extent it's rare this happens, Mr Speaker. Uh, this has been a process that has had bipartisan uh, support uh, for a long period of time. And I think most people, I'm hoping all members of this uh, House can appreciate the significance of today's decision by the National Native Title Tribunal. This will be, Mr Speaker, once the process has run its course about any potential judicial processes uh, that may or may not happen uh, from here on in, uh, without doubt the most comprehensive native title agreement in Australian history. Indeed, Mr Speaker, uh, it, it, I'll go so far as to say uh, the closest we've come to actually a treaty entered into between a state government and a traditional owner group uh, with, uh, with the Noongar people. Uh, it will, uh, as a package of social, economic and cultural uh, outcomes for Noongar people, uh, will be, I think, over the generation significant. And I want to remind everybody this next year will be 20 years since the single Noongar claim uh, started its process. 20 years, Mr Speaker. Uh, a long period of time. The settlement negotiations began in about 2009, were resolved in 2015. And then, if we weren't finished with the South West Aboriginal Land and Sea Council, then we put them through a process of uh, High Court challenge and then amendment to the Native Title Act uh, through the Commonwealth Parliament. So to say it's been anything but a smooth journey uh, certainly would be an exaggeration, Mr Speaker. But the leadership of the Noongar community, the South West Aboriginal Land and Sea Council in particular, those who, uh, including those who are now no longer with us, uh, need to be congratulated for their determination, Mr Speaker. This will involve uh, some 30,000 Noongar people, benefits to 30,000 Noongar people, uh, uh, over about 200,000 square kilometres in the southwest of Western Australia, Mr Speaker. Uh, it will, uh, the, the six groups, and all members will recall uh, that uh, we'd had a debate in here last, the last term of government, I'd see the passage of the Noongar Recognition Bill, the Kura Nidja Budawan Bill. Uh, that uh, recognise the Noongar people as the traditional owners of the southwest of Western Australia. But the six Iliwas, the Baladong people, the southwest Bujara, the Wagal Kaip and southern Noongar, the Wajuk people, uh, the Ewart and the Nalakala Budja, all six have now been registered. Now, uh, there is a 28-day period in which uh, an appeal effectively to the Federal Court can take place. If that does indeed take place, then I expect Hopefully, within the next six months, that will finally be resolved. I'm confident uh, that it will survive any potential um, any, any court, uh, any court uh, challenges. And there was, the question was put to me by the media today, Mr Speaker, and, and I note that there are some people out the front today, and there have been. This has been a contentious period of converse, uh, conversation amongst the Noongar people, with the people today up front still opposing this settlement, Mr Speaker. The judgment of Wilcox that effectively led us to the negotiation the government to the negotiation process and now to hear the question was put would the Noongar people have been better off with the Wilcox judgment proceeding or with the settlement and the six idea was that have now been registered and I think undoubtedly Mr Speaker because of uh, the passage of history the Noongar people bore the brunt of colonisation and the, or the alternative tenures that can't coexist with native title means that the package, some $1.3 billion, some over 300,000 hectares of land, is by far a better package, more generous and more equal to the Noongar people um, uh, than uh, the, if we'd followed the Wilcox model, which would have seen, to be frank, Mr Speaker, the vast majority of native title in the South West extinguished in any event by the passage of history. So, Mr Speaker, I do want to congratulate the Noongar people. I want to thank all members of parliament now for consecutive parliaments who have worked hard, I think, Mr Speaker, to deliver to the people of Western Australia, not just the Noongar people, an example uh, of where native title and negotiation can work and deliver to the Noongar people what I think will be, when we look back in history, one of the most, if not the most significant native title settlement in this country. Yeah. In the uh, late 1990s, I was um, 
very fortunate as a result of a, a, as a result of an acquaintance of mine, um, Bishop Philip Huggins, who was an Anglican bishop in Perth, organised a friendship tour for Noongar people from uh, southwest Western Australia, and particularly from the Perth region, to make a trip to uh, Warburton, um, out in the uh, out in the, out in the uh, middle of Western Australia, to the Nanat Yarra lands, and um, and as a result of uh, a long-standing um, long friendship with my good friend uh, Tim Huggins, who was Bishop Phillips' son, I was able to be uh, part of this exchange, this, this friendship tour. Um, and so when I arrived in Parliament after the election last year, and I was, um, I was walking around the building, and I had it explained to me, uh, these wonderful glass panels that are on the wall above, that are above the wall to the Aboriginal people's room, I was... Um, uh, I was incredibly moved uh, by, this, um, by this synchronicity that had occurred because 20 years after I'd been uh, a visitor to the, to the, uh, to the town of Warburton and, and seen the women there preparing these glass panels, it was great to arrive in Parliament House and to see, and to see that artwork reflected and, and represented and taking a, a position, a, such a position of, of prominence. And so to the people of Mount Lawley, I just want to share with you um, how wonderful this parliament is. I know that I know that parliament itself and where's politicians come in for a lot of criticism, but um, we we endeavour and and through the member for Kalgoorlie's contribution, you can see this. Members can see this. We endeavour to do the best that we can do in the interests of our community. Um, the glass panels. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll only speak briefly about the glass panels, but the great thing about the glass panels is that they tell various stories of the, of the communities in, in, in Warburton, and they, re Warburton, and they represent different parts of the, of the life and, and the experience that, that those um, people went through. Um, and to have them here is a constant reminder for those of us who don't uh, come from an Aboriginal background uh, about, the, about the fantastic contribution, the cultural and artistic contribution that Aboriginal people have been able to make to Western Australia. Uh, the other reason I'm very pleased to stand and speak in contribution uh, to this bill today is that um, uh, Tim Huggins celebrated his birthday yesterday. So Tim and I got to experience that journey 20 years ago and um, happy birthday to Tim. Uh, that trip um, 20 years ago actually inspired a commitment within me to pursue uh, justice on behalf of Aboriginal people. And during um, my time at uni, I was able to study uh, native title law and, um, and Aboriginal people in the law. And I was always interested in um, what sort of contributions we as legal practitioners or we as a society more generally might be able to make in order to redress the injustice that Aboriginal people had suffered. And, um, and it was a great privilege after I graduated from UWA and, and started working that I was able to act as a native title lawyer on behalf of the Injibundi Aboriginal Corporation. This is an Aboriginal corporation that would be uh, well known to a couple of members in this place. They, um, the traditional lands of the Injibundi people are in the Pilbara. Um, uh, they stretch around um, Mill Stream in the area around Karajini National Park. And together with the Nalama people, they stretch all the way down to the, down to the coast. Uh, and so, one of the reasons that I stand to speak in support of this legislation is that uh, I recognise the importance of connection to country for Aboriginal people and I recognise the positive effect that this legislation will have in enhancing that connection to country uh, for, the, um, for the people of Junjunjara. I want to pay my respects to Michael Woodley, the CEO of the Injibundi Aboriginal Corporation, for all of the work that he does on behalf of his community in the face of some incredible uh, trials and tribulations. And I want to thank the uh, Minister for Aboriginal Affairs. Um, he, he knows uh, all too well some of the struggles that are faced by the Injibundi Aboriginal Corporation um, and some of the uh, endeavours and some of the efforts that they put in in order to achieve uh, justice and fairness for their people in a way that enables them to maintain their traditional connection to country. And speaking about the Minister for Aboriginal Affairs, um, I was very pleased to be able to ask him a question in question time yesterday about the historic uh, registration in the National Native Title Tribunal of the uh, South West Native Title Settlement. I know um, uh, there's a, uh, a friend of mine, Jai Wilson, who has dedicated many years to working on this particular Native Title Settlement, and he was very pleased, I know, uh, to see that the Native Title Settlement had been registered in the National Native Title Tribunal yesterday. Now, that doesn't spell the end of, um, 
of the discussion that the government must have with uh, Noongar people and, and Aboriginal people throughout the South West. Uh, Mr Acting Speaker, I believe it marks the start of that discussion, but now that discussion can take place in a much more respectful context. Uh, I actually think that it will provide the foundation, it will provide the basis for a real and lasting resolution of uh, native title issues, and so it, it, it casts us into a fantastic it casts us into a fantastic situation. Now, let me draw uh, members' attention back to the specifics of the legislation. So, so with those introductory comments, let me draw members' attention back to the specific aspects of the Jundjundjara um, Reserves Community Bill that we're debating in the chamber this afternoon and acknowledge the contribution from members opposite who have indicated their support for this legislation. Um, before I entered uh, um, this place, uh, during the course of the campaign leading up to the March 2017 election, there was an organisation that was very active, uh, very active throughout Western Australia, but particularly active in um, our neighbourhood, in, in, in my community of Mount Lawley. And that organisation was called Create Ranger Parks. And one day down at Hyde Park, they put, up, they put on a, um, a stall and they had a, a, um, an artist, and excuse me, I'm just going to make sure I get the name right who was helping members of the community contribute to a work of art um, that was going to be a community orientated work of art in order to support and encourage and promote the campaign that was being run. Uh, this giant dot painting, I'm just quoting here, this giant dot painting was designed by Indigenous artist Netta Knapp and proudly completed by over 200 Mount Lawley residents in support of the campaign to create Ranger Parks. And it says further that Create Ranger Parks is a community-based initiative to create a major network of new national parks managed by Indigenous rangers for all Western Australians to enjoy. So that's uh, by way of introduction into uh, the organisation Create Ranger Parks. And so as part of the McGowan Labor government, and bearing in mind the efforts of the people in my local community to promote this issue of creating Ranger Parks, um, I was particularly pleased to see such a significant contribution that, that has been made by the government in the short time in which it's been in, in office in order to promote and to uh, resource Indigenous Ranger programs, which is an, which is an object and an endeavour entirely consistent with, in my view, entirely consistent with the motivation and the philosophy and the ideas behind the Create Ranger Parks initiative. Which brings me to the current bill. This current bill will enable the Junjunjara people to have a greater certainty over the tenure of the land that, that forms such a significant part of their traditional uh, lands. Members uh, to my left, just keep the conversation down a bit. I'd like to hear the member from Mount Lawley. Member from Mount Lawley. Uh, thank you, Mr Acting Speaker. These are their traditional lands with which they've had such a long-standing connection, and I refer members to the um, explanatory memorandum, but can I just say this? The Junjunjara community has steadily grown, um, maintaining a focus on the traditional cultural cycles of desert life. People from across western desert regions with a traditional attachment to the Spinifex lands have returned to live at Junjunjara. Now, despite isolation and remoteness, the Spinifex people's resilience and determination to live on country and provide strong local governments makes this a unique community. Now, there's the a number of initiatives that the state government has implemented in order to support and encourage these people. $23.8 million in capital to boost community housing and infrastructure, as well as simultaneously engaging Aboriginal businesses and supporting Aboriginal jobs. There's the $770,000 through the Pillar Nuru Aboriginal Corporation uh, funding as part of the government's Aboriginal Ranger program. Now that funding, that $770,000 funding will allow for four female rangers to be employed under the Minima Unionipa Seed Women Project. And that is exactly what the Create Ranger Parks Initiative and the McGowan Labor Government's Indigenous Ranger Program is all about. And so as well as promoting opportunity, as well as encouraging connection to culture and country, as well as, um, as, well as, uh, as, well as encouraging innovation and entrepreneurialism, all of that is done in a context where the land tenure the entitlement to exercise and use and enjoy the land was under question. This is, a, this is in a nature reserve. 
And what this legislation does, members, is this clarifies precisely how that land tenure works and it reserves this land, this particular parcel and this particular portion of land for the specific use of this community. And that's a great initiative because it provides the certainty that this community needs in order to discharge its functions, in order to preserve its cultural connection to the country, in order to promote its way of life and its, and its, um, and its community. And, and, and that, that really provides hope and opportunity for um, the people at Junjunjara.